OK, good morning, everybody. Um, in the absence of the chairman and vice chairman of the committee, could I please invite members to nominate a temporary chairman for the meeting? Thank you. Any other nominations? No. So in the absence of any other nominations, Councillor Ward? Good morning and welcome to today's planning committee meeting. I'm Councillor John Ward and will be chairing the planning committee meeting today. On our top table are Tim Barker, who is presenting, Tracy Lincoln and Don Matthews. I'll now read out the fire safety notice. We're not expecting a fire drill today, so if the fire alarm sounds, we will evacuate the building. There are two fire exits from this room. One is through the double doors where you came in, and the other is the door to the right of the stage, which leads to an external fire escape. Please note that you should not use the lift in the event of a fire. In the event of an evacuation, we will meet to the left of the driveway at the main entrance of Thorpe Lodge. This meeting is being live streamed. Members of the public are welcome to film proceedings as long as they are not disruptive to the conduct of the meeting. If anyone wishes to film or record the meeting, please identify yourselves now. Please, can you all ensure that your mobile phones and electronic devices are turned to silent? Councillors, please do not use your mobile phone whilst the committee is in session. We will have comfort breaks at various times throughout the meeting. If you must use your mobile, then please leave the room. However, you will appreciate that this could result in you not being able to vote on the matter under discussion at the time you leave the room. The order of business is as set out on the agenda, but you'll note that item one has been withdrawn. Members of the public can only speak if prior arrangements have been made in accordance with the Council's scheme of public speaking. Only people who have registered to speak will be able to address the committee. The order will be as follows. The planning officer will present the application. Public speakers will then be asked to present their case, followed by questions from members of the committee to clarify something the speaker has said and not to invite the speaker to put further points across. The order of public speaking is parish, town council first, followed by objectors and finally supporters. Council members who are not members of this committee will then be invited to speak for the allocated time of a maximum of five minutes for each speaker. This will be followed by questions from members of the committee. Again, these questions will only be to clarify something the speaker has said and not to invite the speaker to put further points across. The committee will then discuss and determine the application. Finally, there is no provision for members of the public to circulate documents, photographs, etc., at the meetings. Are there any questions before I open the meeting? No. Thank you. Right. We will go straight to item one. Declarations of interest from anybody, please. No. Uh, I can ask uh, Officer Matthews for any apologies, please. Thank you, Chairman. We've got apologies from Councillors Monker, Councillor Vincent, and Councillor Pratton. And substitute members? Um, Councillor Leggett is substituting for Councillor Monk. Yes, yes, thank you. 
Right, item three, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on 23rd February. All agreed. Thank you very much. Are there any matters arising from those minutes? No. Right. Applications for planning permission. They start at page uh, 65, which is the uh, land opposite the plough in at Fengate. So go over to. Yeah. Yes. Any indication why the first application was withdrawn? I can update you on that, um, Councillor. Um, the application. Um, was considered um, with the applicant in terms of bringing it up to committee. I think the um, applicant was um, concerned around the outstanding matters around nutrient neutrality and the habitats regulations um, and felt um, they needed to understand that impact and think about what that mitigation was before they wanted that to be brought in front of committee. So, so that's the reason. And we did um, give the applicant the choice on that. Um, clearly, we can resolve to... Um, approve that subject to, you know, delegated authority subject to resolving that matter. The applicants were not comfortable with that. And on that basis, because that is a new matter, um, we were happy with, um, the chair was happy with that being withdrawn. Thank you, Chair. Is the council uh, in a position to know how it should proceed with neutrality? There, there is a, after this meeting, there is a short briefing for four councillors on, on this issue. Okay. Thank you. Right, over to Officer Barker to present the first item, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've just got a small update to the, a minor update to the recommendation. It should read, authorise uh, the Assistant Director of Place rather than authorise the Director of Place. So it's just to amend that. Um, so the application relates to the Palau Inn, which is on the A140, which is here uh, in Marsham, and specifically a bit of land just on the north side of this minor road here, which is called Fengate which has been used as a kind of overflow parking area. And this is for retrospective um, planning permission for that as the works have been carried out. Uh, this just shows um, photos of the pub in the original parking area. I should stress that these photos were, were first, a couple of photos were taken um, when the pub was closed. And there again, so you can see the parking area around the pub. And then this here is the new parking area um, on the opposite side of Fengate. Um, the, uh, this was taken when the pub was uh, you know, it was open. Uh, it's come about as a consequence of two issues. Uh, firstly, during the COVID, when the pub was subject to COVID restrictions on social distancing and things like that, there was a need to use part of the existing parking area to provide extra outside seating. They've also had issues with the popularity of the pub, which has resulted in a lot of on-street parking along Fengate, which narrows down quite a bit after this, this view here, uh, um, resulting in complaints due to the parking on the road. Concerns have been raised about the visual impact and there's clearly going to be some impact from the development of a car park on what was a green field. It is a relatively limited area of land, however, and is not subject to any statutory uh, protections. Reference is also made in, by the objectors to the impact on a water course, which you can see in this photo here. This is outside the red line to the site, which you can just see the, to the edge, just about, maybe, oops, sorry. Um, well, it's just to the left there. Um, clearly, as you can see, there is a need for this parking, and there's no clear alternative solution for where this parking could otherwise be located. Therefore, given the needs of the business and also to, uh, seeking to avoid displaced parking resulting in a highway hazard, it is considered that this is on balance an acceptable solution and the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Any questions for the officer, please? No, well, there's no public speaking, so over to you, councillors. Yes, Councillor Riley. Sorry, I've got a real problem with uh, this glitching today. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Come to the rescue. Yeah, um, I, th I think also the um, issues from down there, but I'm just trying to get back to the documents are, um, I know from the parish, the parish had flagged up, I believe, that they had a concern with uh, 
potential development there where this additional car parking would be? They have uh, raised a concern about that. I mean, clearly, this is the what's here for, for us to decide. Um, that's not, that site is outside the development, uh, the set, settlement limit for the um, for, for Marsham. So it's unlikely we would support any application for new development. But obviously, that would be, if anything else came forward, that would be considered on its own merit. Yeah. Okay. Any further comments? We've got to consider there's a lot of cars there if, if there wasn't that car park there they would all be parked on the road at that point in time uh, where well, it's proposed and seconded that we go with the officer's recommendation which is to authorize the assistant director of place to approve with conditions subject to satisfactorily addressing the requirements under the habitat regulations regarding nutrient neutrality so all those in favor please Do you know, uh, yes and against abstention one abstention okay thank you and we move on to the next item one merlin avenue Officer Baker. thank you so this site is in sprouston it's uh, located just off the roxham road which is uh, here uh, the property is a single story property in a line of single story properties down uh, merlin avenue uh, the properties on roxham road are two-story the application is to extend the property to the rear and also to the side. Um, if you look at the elevations, you can see that it simply um, involves extending, yep, get the building further to the rear and also the, um, what was the garage on the side and creating a, pitch, a smaller pitched roof on that bit. Uh, this shows the extent of where the um, extension will go out to, to the garden. You can see that, that will leave garden space to the rear. Uh, this shows the existing rear, with the rear the currently flat roof section there. And uh, just to give you an indication again, the, the extension will come out a bit prefer, further back than the rear line of the neighbouring property, well, but not a great deal, as you can see at the plan at the end. Uh, the pros will have little impact on the street scene, and then the main difference will be to the, where the garage has been converted and the, the small pitched roof being created on there, but the majority of the uh, extension is to the rear, so we won't have a great uh, impact on the street scene. Concerns have been raised about the scale of development and the impact on neighbouring properties. However, it is considered that the site is of sufficient size to accommodate an extension of the scale proposed, whilst the single story nature of the development is not considered to result in any unacceptable impact from overlooking or being overbearing. And as such, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Any questions for the officer, please? No. Over to you, councillors. Seconded by Councillor Fisher. Okay. Any comments? All those in favour? It's unanimous. Thank you. So that closes the formal part of the meeting. Oh, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Planning appeals. I missed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Planning appeals. Right. Just to add anything, Chairman. Yes. Um, just in terms of the appeals, there's only, um, you know, there's one appeal allowed, and that was um, a telecommunications mast. Um, that's unfortunate that has been allowed. That is 17.5 metres. We felt that was um, in, having a harmful impact on Dustondale. However, the inspectors um, come to a different conclusion on that. The well, these are just for noting, unless you've got any comments. Yes, Councillor. My only comment, uh, Chairman, is it's nice to see at long last that the planning inspectors do seem to be getting the message mm. about the fact of upholding our policies, yeah, which indeed. has been a bit lax in the past, I think. Yeah, yeah. Any further comments? Happy to note those? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So that is the formal part of the meeting closed. Now we've got a update yeah if we can stop the live stream please we have an